Hello there. A um, few people have been asking me how I managed to get this effect of this vase from this die cut. Now this um, die is called a large glass vase from Gummy Pan, which is a, a Swedish craft company. They make super dies, a lot of them really quite small in dimensions. These are gummy pan dies too. This is a, a witch hazel twig, and I can't remember the name of that one, but it's also gummy pan. And um, they look lovely in the various pots and vases that the company does. This is one of their larger ones, and I really quite like it. So. At the moment, it just looks kind of flat and ordinary. So I thought to myself, what can I do to give it a more rounded feel? Um, and maybe a little bit of, of interest as well. So what I thought I'd do, I would go through my um, embossing folders and I would emboss some kind of design on there. I don't actually remember which of these i think it might oh is it that one i honestly don't remember which one i used but the thing you can do is to look in your stash and see what you've got and i wanted things that had got some sort of sort of rounded swirl to give it the impression of a rounded vase so i held one of these things and and kind of put it behind what the image would be to see if there was anything that I kind of fancied the look of. That one I don't much care for. This one, I'm not sure if I actually used this one. I can't work out what I did or how I did it, but I think it might have, it might have been this one. Can you see there's a sort of a, a swirly pattern there? I think it might have been this one and it looks like it might have gone there. Is that right? Well, it doesn't matter. Let's we'll just try this one and use it there. I've got other other ones here that I I picked that have got this some sort of rounded design on them. I don't know if you can actually see these, but it it's just trial and error really, and and seeing what you've got in the in the availability stakes. Right now, this is going to be quite tricky to get through here. That's really quite a tight fit for. Oh, embossing in my Platinum 6. There we go. Right, let's take a look and see what we've got. I don't know if it's that. I think it was. might have been that one. I don't know. But before I've finished, what I'll be doing is moulding it a little bit anyway. But before we get to that, let's try and get some colour on. And what I used for this was some of this Rusty Patina from Viva, Viva Decor. And this one is called Oxid. Anyway, Rusty Patina. I don't know if the lot. This one just is called Rusty. And if you, I'll, I'll open them and let you have, I don't want to keep that out of the way because I, it's kind of messy. This one is just plain. There's no shimmer or anything to that one. Whereas this one, oh, they've been in the drawer for ages. Can you see? It's, it, it's kind of got some shimmer. I don't know if it's supposed to go like this. But um, anyway, I used it. And this is a pot of, also by Viva, it's called Paper Soft Colour. And there's a sponge in there with colour on it. Colourful paper. Tinted stamping colour. For my paper world, paper design work. Instructions inside. Well, I don't know where instructions are. They've long since gone. Or are they in here? Oh, just a minute. I've got some instructions here. If all else fails, I guess you can look at instructions, can't you? For perfect application, of dip a, sp a sponge brush into the colour and with a gentle sweeping action, apply it to your Viva Colour Designer paper. Oh, well, there you go. 
Use different colours to achieve a graduated soft effect. Well, I didn't know that was there. So it just shows how much I read, doesn't it, really? Anyway, there we go. So let's get on. I'm going to put a glove on because I got in a, quite a state the last time. So first thing, I think I'll rub a little bit of this over. Just a bit. Looks a bit boring. Let's keep that handy. Let's try a bit of this one. I think this is the one I use mainly. Just rubbing it on. Get something to hang on to it with. Here we go. Might use a bit more of the darker one. Just to add a bit of shading. It is messy, isn't it? Look at it. I'm getting the right pickle. Now, with this one, it said I should use a brush, didn't it? Here we go. Can you see all this? That looks a bit much. Let's just take a bit of that off. Get a bit of paper towel. If I could spot it, there it is. Give it a bit of a buff. And looking at that one, it looks a bit darker. Let's see if I can get a bit more of this on. I don't know what I did before because it's it's all kind of an experiment. And I think that whenever we try these things, we just have a go. I keep saying have a go. But it's 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 what you know how you can find out things really. I'm sure that's all I put on there and it looks a different sort of finish. Now, let me just dry that off a moment and see if, if that makes any difference. I, d I don't know what I did. But the, th those two are the two products I use, the, the, the soft colour graphite and the patina, the rusty patina. Let me just give this a hit. A, a, a I think because this stuff has separated so much, um, different effects come from the different parts of the of the mixture, if you know what I mean. It's starting to look a bit more like the other one. It's got more of the juicy bit in it. So, there we go. Now, before I would add that to my card, I would dry it and mould it ever so slightly. And this one, down the centre, I'm anxious not to get it messed up. Down the centre is a piece of, um, down here, a piece of foam tape. It's sitting on a piece of foam tape. And the edges push down slightly to try and, um, to try and give it that rounded shape. bit of distress glaze. I might try a bit of that. I've got a clean finger. don't think I did this before, but um, it's always the first time for everything. Let's give it a bit of polish. 
Oh, that's nice. Giving it a nice shine. I don't know what I did before. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Got a nice, nice shine on it. Now. I don't remember doing that before. Perhaps I did. I don't know. There we go. But that, I think you'll admit, does look a lot more interesting than that. So just to shape it a little bit, I'm going to put this on a piece of paper towel because I don't want to get the wet spot. Just give it a little, just a little bit of movement. Do you see? Yeah. So it's experimenting really, having a try. I've had these things thinking I was going to do wonderful things with them for ages, years. And uh, I suddenly spotted them in the drawer and I thought, well, you know, what can I do? And this is what, this is what happened. So have a play. So that was embossed, cut, die cut, embossed, inked with various mediums, polished, and then just shaped slightly. This is what I would do. I would put a piece of um, piece of this down the centre like that. Glue on either side so that when it's stuck in, it would have a nice bit of shape. There you go. Have a go yourself. And as ever, thank you so much for watching.